Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. Today, I really wanna talk about the books I never talk about. I wanna talk about my favorite books that I feel like I don't discuss enough. You know, like I've got my Heartstopper, I've got my The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter, like I've got my books that I speak about all the time and I recommend all the time, but I just wanna talk about some books that I feel like I don't talk about enough and I don't recommend to you enough. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Before we get into it, if you watched my last video and remember that I need help with my dissertation documentary, I still need help. I, <laughs> you guys, two of you have very kindly sent stuff in. I need probably about 10. Uh, to do what I want to do. So it'd be really amazing if you could send me with videos answering the questions that I have. I'll put all the info down in the description so we don't have to talk about it again. But yeah, I still need help. Okay, anyway, into the actual video. It's about time! So the first book I want to talk about is Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown. This is one of the most powerful books I've ever read. So it's semi-autobiographical, it's about Echo Brown, but it's definitely got this like magical realism twist where she's a wizard and her mum is a wizard and that's something that is passed down throughout their family. There are so many um, trigger warnings for this book, so definitely be careful. I would say like child sexual abuse, addiction, trauma, suicidal ideations, all those kinds of things that are trigger warnings for. So it's definitely something you need to be careful going into. But yeah, it's kind of Echo Brown's story throughout her adolescence, like her childhood and young adulthood. And it's so powerful. It's one of the most powerful books I have ever read. Me every 30 seconds reading the book. That was beautiful. You did such a good job of expressing yourself. I actually listened to the audiobook and Echo Brown narrates the audiobook and there are certain points where you can really hear the emotion in her voice talking about these really difficult things that happened to her. It's very impactful. So I would really recommend the audiobook for that reason because I think you really hear how you know, affected she is emotionally by the memories of these events. But the magical realism element is very interesting. And, and I like that it's autobiographical, but you kind of don't know where the magic starts and ends, if that makes sense. Like there's an element of truth in the magic, I feel like, and it makes it autobiographical with this added twist, with this added excitement, I feel like, to it. One of the things that sticks in my mind about this book is there's a few chapters, I think maybe like two of the chapters are told in this way that we are following these two separate events with very similar themes. And it will just jump back and forth between them, like in the middle of a sentence, we'll stop being in one and go into the other. And obviously when I'm listening to the audiobook, I can't tell when these are gonna come up, which I think adds to it. And it was just really interesting how these two events, she found ways to like mirror them in one another and draw on, I guess, like the lessons or emotions of these events simultaneously between them. So it was just amazing. I would really recommend Black Girl Unlimited. I feel like it's a very underrated book. I don't really hear anyone speak about it. And it literally is the most emotionally impactful book like throughout I've ever read. Like some books you read, you'll cry at the end or something. But this one was just very like emotionally heavy throughout, but in a way that I didn't find too like difficult to read. It was, you wanted to carry on reading. So I'd really recommend it. Echo Brown at the moment actually is, there's a GoFundMe set up because she needs a kidney. Um, she had kidney failure. And so there's a GoFundMe set up and lots of information on, on her website as well. So I'll leave all the information for that link down below in case you wanted to go check that out and help out. Okay, my next favorite book that I do not speak about enough. I feel like I spoke about this a lot at the start of my channel, but I haven't spoken about this recently, but this is uh, Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Niang. You're perfect, Some you're beautiful, them. you look like Linda Evangelista, you're a model. This is one of my favorite fantasy series, I think, what did I give the second one? Girls of Storm and Shadow. I think I gave it four stars, but it's like, it wasn't as good. I can recognize that, but I love the characters. So basically in this, we follow Lei, who, that's right, isn't it? I'm really bad with character names. So often I try to like, <laughs> like most of these books, I can't tell you the character names. I don't remember character names. I don't, but I think it's Lei. Yay, Lei and Ren. I'm right, I know I'm right. I know I'm right. <laughs> I know I'm right. Listen to what I have to say because I'm right. She is recruited to be a paper girl for the king, which basically is like the king's 
uh, concubine or the, these girls are forced to sleep with the king and so it's a very you know emotionally impactful book again obviously it's tackling rape and sexual assault I thought it did it so well for a YA book a YA fantasy book and something I've often said about this book is that you have, you have like I think maybe six paper girls that are recruited and Natasha Niang manages to show the trauma of the experience that they're going through in like different so how different people react to that so some of the girls really emotionally draw inward some become angry some become infatuated with their abuser um, and feel like they love him that was really well done to me because it showed that there isn't like a one reaction to sexual assault or rape and each of those reactions are equally valid in their own way and I thought that was done really well but the fantasy of this is amazing like the world building feels so 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 vivid like so so vivid some of the most vivid fantasy I've ever read and that's something I really look for in my fantasy I need to know how it looks how it, like I need to know the smells like the atmosphere I need to know everything I for me the world building and the the world almost needs to be its own character for me in fantasy. I don't really like fantasies that kind of like brush over that and just go into plot and characters. Natasha Yang's writing was done so well. I can't wait for when she puts out like other series other than this one as well. She's definitely one of my favourite authors and this book really got me back into reading. I remember I read it before I had my booktube channel and I was actually in Florida on holiday and I went into Barnes & Noble, which can I say, I do prefer Barnes & Noble to Waterstones. How dare you? How dare you? Oh. <laughs> We're gonna get into this, right? The thing that annoys me about Waterstones and why I don't like doing come book shopping with me is because the books on Waterstones are just on the walls. So like you can't hide in like the rows that Barnes and Noble have. Barnes and Noble's like stacks of rows of books, whereas Waterstones is just like the books on the walls. So like I'm out in the open filming. I don't want that. I wanna be able to hide where no one can see me. <laughs> I went with a list of books I remember that I wanted to get but this was one that I saw and I think it was because Kayla had recommended it from Books and Lala and I had all these books that I'd wanted to pick up in Florida because of the editions that um the US editions that I wanted and I remember this was the book I read on holiday so it kind of like evokes that memory of like sitting by the pool and reading this book and falling back in love with reading for me. Um, so it's even like a special book to me. But yeah, I love Lay. I love, oh, it's also sapphic. It's also a girl, girl romance, um, which I loved. It's probably like my favorite sapphic romance I've ever read. And the second one isn't as good in the series, but I'm hoping for amazing things from the third. I feel like it's gonna kill me emotionally. It comes out, I think at the end of this year and I'm not ready, like, oh my god, it's gonna be so good, it's gonna be so good, so if you love vivid fantasy, this is the one for you, I feel like I just spoke about that book for way too long. <laughs> Next is You Must Not Miss by Christina Leno, again, cannot tell you the name of the main character. <laughs> Fucking useless sack of shit! Get out! This is about a book, again it's dealing with sexual assault, this girl who's been through a lot of trauma and is definitely struggling emotionally and dreams up this magical world where she's in control but then the world kind of becomes real in her garden shed. Okay, how do I describe this? So again, it's magical realism, fabulism kind of thing. I feel like it did such a good job of showing a character, a girl particularly who's been through sexual assault, who's been through trauma, angry, and showing that pain and not shying away from, I guess, the, the harsher sides of that pain. And it was just like the perfect amount of weird and strange, like, you're reading it and you're like, holy fuck, like what is happening here? Like what the fuck is this? <laughs> Lord help me, let's see what happens. It transitions from like normality to like, what the fuck is happening really well? <laughs> like the, the transition is great. I read this towards the end of last year, like, and I, and I read it after I'd filmed my best books of 2020 video. And I was really annoyed because otherwise this would have been up there as one of my best books of 2020. And so I always feel bad for people who watch that video and don't see this book in there because it is up there. It's one of my best books of last year. It was a complete shock. Like I really wasn't expecting much. I kind of bought it for the cover, but I loved it. And 
and I cannot wait to read more of Katrina Leonard's stuff. I have Summer of Soul and Horrid and I need to read them immediately. Now the next couple books, I feel like when I make videos like this, I always gravitate towards my five stars, right? But four stars is still an amazing book and it's still a book I want to recommend to you. So the next couple, the next three books are like 4.5 slash four star books and they're the kind of books I feel like I neglect to speak about. So the first is Watch Us Rise by Renee Watson and Ellen Hagen. This is a contemporary book and I read this in a day. I have a really great memory. I love when books have memories, you know what I mean? And I have a really great memory of reading this last summer. I was around my boyfriend's house during like lockdown. I lived there for a while and I, was, I sat in the garden like literally in one seat and I just read this that whole day and it was amazing. It was a really, really great book. So it's about two girls who kind of like want to start this feminist group at their school and it's just about their journey in learning about feminism and activism and learning about the ways in which their like activism is inherently flawed because all of our feminism and activism is flawed with the with you know the flaws that we carry I want to read more books with like that activism element to it I know Moxie is supposed to be good I do have that so maybe I'll read that soon and it made me fall in love with Renee Watson's writing in particular I loved the chapters that she wrote like the chapters that she wrote were five stars and then the chapters that Ellen Hagen wrote were like four maybe 3.5 stars um I really loved the character voice and what she went through it deals with like being fat and the way that that bleeds into feminism and being black and how that you know black feminism and how uh, exploring that and and the ways in which um, her friend actually in the book is kind of ignorant of the struggles that she goes through as a black larger girl yeah I really could relate to some of the stuff particularly like I was always the fat friend like back at school when I was younger and so I could relate to those kind of passages and I thought it was just done so well so if you're looking for a contemporary with a bit of like feminism activism twist this is what I would recommend. Next is Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nouveau. Also, When the Tigers Came Down the Mountain, I would recommend this both. It's kind of going to be like this series of novellas. My mum actually read When the Tigers Came Down the Mountain before she didn't know that Empress of Salt and Fortune <laughs> existed because it's so small. She just didn't see it on my bookshelf. Um, so you can read them not in order, I guess. But Empress of Salt and Fortune in particular is about a cleric named... Ch Chi. They are a non-binary character, which I really appreciate reading about a non-binary character. I think that's something that we don't have enough of. They go to this uh, woman and the woman explains that she was like a servant of the Empress of Sword and Fortune and basically um, narrates her life with, with, with her and kind of like what they got up to when the Empress was exiled. And it's just beautifully written, like Nevo's writing is just beautiful. The amount of storytelling, world building, vividness in this short novella, like it's literally only 100 pages, is incredible. It is brilliant American literature. And I don't care what anybody, it is. It's lit, it should be taught in schools. It has this short snapshot and it's a bit confusing. Like you read it and you're like, I am not a hundred percent sure what's going on but I don't mind. I can live with not being a hundred percent sure just because I enjoy the vibe. I loved Nevo's writing like the the vividness and the beautiful lyricalness I feel like of the writing of these is what makes them. If you like novellas maybe if you're a bit of a reading slump these will literally take you an hour to read an hour or two. Yeah just such a beautiful book. And then the last book I want to speak about <laughs> um, is one that I loved and I really 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 need to read the sequel to um it's wrapped up at the moment i definitely need to read it is strange the dreamer by lane taylor so this is definitely a booktube favorite but i feel like i don't speak about my love for it enough so you oh my god what are their names i know it i know it but i don't dum dum <laughs> laszlo you have laszlo strange who works in this library and um, is kind of obsessed with this mythical lost city of Weep. And then the people of Weep kind of come to his town and like try and recruit people and he ends up going to Weep um, to solve this problem that they have. And there's also another character, should I say, you kind of don't know her at the beginning, but there's another very influential character in this whose perspective you follow kind of like from the third point on of the book, maybe even a bit earlier, um, who is a very interesting 
Uh, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. Hang on, let me, I've got to look up the synopsis to know what is a spoiler and what's not for this. All it says in the description, the answers await in Weep, but so do more mysteries, including the blue skinned goddess who appears in Laszlo's dreams. Okay, that's who she is. <laughs> Their dynamic through these dreams is such an interesting dynamic. Again, this is some of the most beautiful writing I have ever read. Some of the most beautiful writing ever. Like Lainey Taylor, oh my god, I cannot wait to read everything that she has written eventually when I'm reading again <laughs> properly because it's just so beautiful. Like very kind of Erin Morganston, they kind of give me the same feeling of this whimsy, this magicalness, this fairy tale-ness, this like you feel like you're a child being read a story again. When I tell you I sobbed, I sobbed. I was this ending killed me like it killed me like it killed me hideous experience for me to go through how horrible and shit but laszlo amazing character i really love all of the characters in this i feel like there's a lot of characters with really interesting dynamics and when i i just cried so much and like i remember when i read strange dreamer i was like i need to read muse of nightmares straight away the sequel and i haven't and I'm really sad about it because it's like one of the most book, one of the books I'm most excited for. So hopefully, listen, I've only got a couple like weeks, months, months, yeah, months left of uni. Once that's done this summer, when I tell you, I'm going to read. <laughs> so that is all the books I wanted to talk about that I love so dearly and I think about all the time but I feel like I do not speak about enough. Let me know some books that you feel like aren't spoken about enough that are your favourites. I would love to hear them down below or maybe get some sneaky recs. And thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten to the end, comment... I don't even know. Tom, what emoji should they comment if they've gotten to the end? A goat. A goat. Okay, comment the goat emoji <laughs> if you've gotten to the end. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!